I welcome you to the fourth module of this course title uh, Psychology of Emotion Theory and Applications. Uh, the module 4 is about uh, self conscious emotions. So, it is a category of emotion uh, which has certain specific characteristics and in this module we will be talking about uh, this different emotions that can be categorized under self conscious emotion. So, this is overall lecture number 8 and it is the first lecture of module 4. So, in this lecture uh, we will be specifically focusing on uh, something called as self evaluative emotions which is one category of uh, self conscious emotion uh, which includes emotions like guilt, shame, embarrassment and pride. So, before we talk about to, uh, today's lecture let me give you a brief recap of last lecture. Last lecture was about physiology of emotion and uh, in lecture 7 specifically we talked about how emotion is connected to physiological changes in the brain. So, in that context we have discussed the concept of brain lateralization which basically means that human brain is divided into right brain, left brain and the right brain was found to be primarily associated with the emotional experiences and we have discussed so many other characteristics uh, in the last lecture. Then we have discussed triune brain model which is one of the earlier theory of brain model that talks about uh, how with the evolution uh, different layers of brain have evolved one over the other. So, he in that model basically talks about three specific layers uh, which are functionally different in terms of their specific functionalities. So, first is the reptilian brain which basically controls all the survival related functions reflex actions like in human heartbeat and so on. So, all the reflex and survival related actions are controlled by the reptilian brain. So, this is the first brain that is shared with the reptiles. Uh, then the mammalian brain uh, evolved over the reptilian brain which also basically uh, basically deals with the emotional aspects of it. So, all the limbic system other thing which are primarily responsible for emotional experiences in the brain is in the mammalian part of brain and uh, neocortex this is the latest development uh, in the brain typically it is. Uh, found more developed in the human brain. It is responsible for thinking, logic and so on and the complex thought processes. We have discussed some of the limitations of this theory also. Then we discussed in the context of brain structure, one particular brain structure called amygdala which is a part of limbic system is primarily, uh, I mean most of the research has gone into this part in, in the context of emotion. So, amygdala uh, has received lot of research attention in the context of emotion, particularly the fear, fear as an emotion. Uh, so, amygdala has been found to be a very important structure that is responsible for uh, emotional experience of fear particularly. So, a lot of brain damage patients or even animals when the amygdala was removed, they, the whole fear response was kind of diminished uh, and so many evidences we have discussed in the, uh, in the last lecture. Amygdala was also found to be you know fac facilitator of uh, or consolidator of emotional memory, particularly the episode, episodic memory where emotions are involved. Like remembering some, some, some events in your life, which is a lot of emotional contact, maybe your last birthday or maybe somebody's marriage and so on. So, amygdala also plays in the consolidation of the memory, uh, which are related to emotional episodes. We have also discussed neurotransmitters, particularly chemicals that are responsible for communicating information. Uh, and uh, and lot of these neurotransmitters are associated with emotional experiences, particularly in the brain. So some uh, some of these that we have discussed are dopamine, serotonin, and endorphins. So dopamine and serotonin are generally you know uh, endorphins. All these three are actually uh, you know um, connected with the mood. So their secretion actually enhances mood. Uh, so, or, the, or the, as the level increases, their, uh, uh, you know, their secretion increases, uh, the, it also influences mood positively. And the lack of release or uh, less release of this kind of hormones are generally associated with uh, no, uh, mood, uh, low mood and so on and other lot of things like depression and other things. So, dopamine has also been, uh, there are a lot of specific functionalities are also associated with them that we have discussed. For example, lot of drug addictions and other things dopamine is responsible uh, because a lot of these drugs actually enhances those dopamine release and no, and it, 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 it gives you a pleasurable you know, feeling and which people get addicted to. 
Uh, serotonin has also been uh, you know used in the treatment of depression and so on because uh, it is it is one of the uh, neurotransmitter which is uh, is has been found to be associated with the depression and in the treatment it is also used endorphin is also more like you know painkillers natural painkiller in the brain and the body uh, and particularly it uh, also mediates both emotional pain like sadness you know, grief and so on and physical pain also. So, the le less release of endorphins increases the pain or something like that or when we experience a lot of pain and grief and emotional pain, endorphins release is re uh, no, uh, diminished and so on. So, these are some of the concepts that we have discussed in the last lecture. So, today we will be talking about self-conscious emotions and particularly uh, one category of self-conscious emotion which are, which are called as self-evaluative emotions. In that context, we will be discussing uh, specifically shame and guilt embarrassment. There is another uh, self evaluative emotion pride and hubris. Uh, this one we will be covering in the next lecture along with some other categories of self conscious emotions uh, because the otherwise it will become too lengthy. So, let us start today's lecture. So, what is the uh, meaning of self conscious emotion? So, the, the term itself the concept of self is included in the term. So, self conscious emo emotions are a category of complex emotions. So, one thing is these are very complex emotion typically uh, found among humans. So, these are very uh, complex emotions uh, that are related to our sense of self and require self awareness, self reflections and our consciousness of others reaction to us. So, it, so this uh, category of emotions they are associated with your sense of self, concept of self, how you define yourself, what is your self image that you have. So, the concept of self develops in a child as they progress uh, you know in terms of physical age. So, somewhere around 2, 3 years this sense of self develops and it consolidates in the later uh, stages of life. So, once you become a separate identity, separate self with certain ideas about self image uh, that also leads to experience of certain emotions which are very much associated with this self concept only. So, this self concept uh, is, is at the foundation of these emotional experiences. So, it this kind of emotional uh, experiences you know requires self awareness. So, you are you have a separate self you have with, with certain awareness of separate identity and so on and when you have a separate identity and sense of self obviously, how others treat you or react to you will also influence your sense of self. So, a lot of time we say our self esteem increases or decreases based on whatever happens in your life. Somebody insults you, so your self esteem will be influenced by this and so on. So, others reactions will also influence your self concept of self say or uh, sense of self and accordingly we will experience a lot of diverse emotions. So, this cluster of emotions which are at the foundation of it is the sense of self are called as self conscious emotions. So, these emotions are experienced because you are conscious of your sense of self, a separate identity with certain characteristics, certain self image and so on. Examples of this kind of emotions are like embarrassment, guilt, shame, pride, humiliation, envy, jealousy and so on. If you see all these emotions, we will be talking uh, in detail about these emotions. If you see all these emotions, these are very much associated with the sense of self, how you evaluate yourself, you know, uh, or your ideas about yourself are kind of. Uh, so, these emotions are byproduct of how you evaluate yourself, okay? how they are byproduct of evaluation, we will be looking in more detail in this lecture as well as in the upcoming lecture. So, this is the basic idea of concept of self conscious emotion. Now, as we have already discussed, these emotions are linked to our understanding of ourselves in relation to others and societal norms. So, when the concept of self is not just an isolated concept, it is always in the context of your relationship with other, how you behave in the society, societal norms, whether you follow it or do not follow it, uh, what is your idea, whether we should follow it or not. So, the concept of societal norms, your relationship with other people how you give importance to the relationship and so on, all these things will comes into the play with the concept of self. So, these emotions will be linked to all these things, how others are reacting to you or how you are re how you are behaving with other people, whether you are following societal norms or not following, all these things will influence your emotions. So, these emotions serve as a driving force for people to put in effort to behave in morally and socially acceptable manner. 
So, a lot of this self conscious emotions are actually does a lot of important purpose and the purpose is that it, it, it propels you or guides you towards more uh, you know, morally and socially acceptable behavior. For example, you know uh, if you feel particularly the self evaluative emotion, if you feel uh, people feel guilty. Now, guilt help you to come to the right path, you know. So, you realize that you have done something wrong. So, that is why if you do not realize that you have done something wrong, then you cannot correct those you know negative behaviors or whatever you have done uh, wrong or whatever it is. So, a lot of the self conscious emotions propels you to behave morally and socially acceptable manner. So, they have some important functions, uh, particularly positive functions in among in, in, in lot of these self conscious emotions. The experience of uh, the self conscious emotion can vary among individuals and cultures. So, this lot of the self conscious emotion um, can be expressed differently in different cultures. Some of these things we have already discussed in the module 2, where we have discussed uh, culture and emotion. For example, you know the shame as a self conscious emotion can be expressed very differently in let us say in Indian culture in some of the state where shame one of the expression of shame is you know people bite their tongue which is not at all evident in other culture like western culture. So, so some cultural di differences in the expression of self conscious emotion will be evident. So, let us see what are the distinctive characteristics of self conscious emotions, what are the uh, unique features or what makes or what are the defining characteristics of self conscious emotions. So, Tracy and Robbins in uh, 2007 in one of their book uh, they, they kind of uh, gave an very elaborative list of characteristics. They typically talk about uh, five key characteristics of self conscious emotions. The first one is self conscious emotion requires self awareness and self representation. So, this is the definition that we have already discussed. So, self for all the self conscious emotion the concept of self is at the center of it. So, so all these emotions will be experience because of you this sense of self awareness, self evaluation and so on, self representation how you present yourself and so on, how you imagine yourself to be, how you define yourself to be will be at the center of all this self conscious emotion. Now, a lot of these basic emotions like fear anger may also have some self asso self concept associated with it, but it is not a mandatory thing. You may experience fear and other basic emotions without self concept associated with them. But to experience self conscious emotion, sense of self awareness, self representation all this thing has to be there. So, this is a kind of mandatory features to call an emotion as a self conscious emotion. Second characteristics is uh, you know self conscious emotion emerge later in childhood than basic emotions. So, if you see developmentally uh, self conscious emotion emerge or much later in the childhood than the basic emotion. Basic emotions can emerge very early in the childhood. Uh, so, this is one of the unique characteristics uh, that is self conscious emotion have a they develop later in the childhood as compared to basic emotions. So, basic emotion can be typically present even the child of few months old like 9 months of old. The, the fear and those kind of best some of the basic emotions can be very early seen in the ch in the in the infants also. So, that is why they are called basic emotion they are kind of biologically hardware. So, they are much more uh, evident or much it is there in the system of human beings even in the very early childhood. Uh, more complex self conscious emotion like shame guilt they may emerge much later possibly may be somewhere 2 3 years of age or it becomes much more uh, you know uh, uh, evident in the much later part of that but it may start somewhere around 3 years of age or 2 3 years somewhere around that so it is much later development in terms of uh, developmentally if you look at these uh, emotions. The third char characteristics is that self conscious emotion facilitate the attainment of complex social goals. So, this attainment of complex social goals. The concept of self is at the root of complex human behavior and emotions. So, these emotions will be mostly displayed in the complex uh, complexities of social life of human beings. Uh, so, that is why they are also related to complex social goals, we experience all this emotion shame, guilt and so on. Uh, this has much more complex context where we experience lot of these things. Uh, 
so emotions are generally you know they are also does uh, survival uh, functions uh, like, like most of the basic emotions are very much needed for survival self conscious emotion however uh, they evolved primarily to help us to achieve social goals they are much more later development and uh, kind of uh, with the development of complex social world, world around us a lot of this uh, self conscious emotion actually evolved and it helps us to maintain status avoiding rejection so many things we'll be discussing as we discuss one by one all these things will be much more clear so they are associated with complex social life com attaining goals social goals and so on so these emotions are uh, ev also evidently found in species with complex social hierarchies like human beings and maybe in some uh, primates also but typically it is mostly the human thing Uh, self conscious emotions promote behaviors that stabilize social hierarchies and affirm status roles such as uh, shame and embarrassment uh, leading to avoidance after a social mistake so for example shame can help us to avoid uh, social mistakes in the future because we experience shame after uh, doing some kind of behaviors guilt may lead to apology after a social trespass so these all uh, these things can have a social repercussions complex social repercussions pride leading to boastfulness after a socially valued success and so on so achieving these social goals can ultimately lead to survival and reproductive success uh, so so this also can be connected to lot of uh, survival in the complex social world the fourth characteristic is that uh, self conscious emotion do not have discrete universally recognized facial expression this is also a very specific characteristics or important characteristics of self conscious emotions if you uh, compare with the basic emotions so if you have uh, uh, we have discussed basic emotions in detail in the earlier lectures where all these basic emotions had a very specific facial expression where we can very clearly say whether somebody is fearful or somebody is experiencing sadness or somebody is angry so a lot of these basic emotions had a very clear uh, at least very intense um, uh, experience of these emotions we are, one can identify then we have seen even a lot of cross cultural evidence of identification of this uh, universal this facial expressions now such kind of facial expressions are not associated with self conscious emotions they may not have very specific identifiable facial expression but in the context of self conscious emotions Uh, you may have more complex kind of uh, expressions which may include uh, body posture head movements and so on combined with facial expressions there are facial expressions obviously whenever we experience this uh, self conscious emotions but they may be mostly co combined with body movements head movements and so on which can give you an expression of uh, this complex emotions Uh, which may convey pride shame and embarrassment so not not just facial expression these are combined with many other uh, bodily movements and head movements so recent research suggests that at least two of this expression pride and shame may be universally recognized some of this has some cross cultural evidence in terms of identification of certain body posture facial expression combination are kind of universally uh, identified uh, or people could kind of connect uh, identify or as expressions are similarly similarly available in different cultures so some of the reasons why self conscious emotion may not have a very clear facial expression so one thing is obviously they are much more complex than basic emotions where just face can ex you know express basic emotion but a lot of the self conscious emotions are much more complex than just face can express it so this complexity of body signal associated with these emotions may convey more complicated message so when facial expression body movements head movement all these are involved and the more complex emotions require lot of complex coordination not just facial expression that is why one of the reason a uh, lot of the self conscious emotions may not have a very clear facial expression because uh, apart from just face cannot convey the complexity of it so body movement and uh, head movement everything is uh, combined to give expression of such complex emotions self conscious emotion may be expressed more often through language than non verbal cues a lot of the self conscious emotions are expressed by speaking when you experience you know uh, like guilt and so on so language is also very important not just non verbal uh, uh, cues expression of self conscious emotion can sometimes be harmful it may be more important to regulate this expression 
uh, in some cultures openly displaying some self conscious emotion like pride may be frowned upon people may not like it too much of showing of pride and so on um, and may impact negatively uh, and so on so so kind of regulation of uh, a lot of the self conscious emotion uh, is also kind of uh, required so just not just automatic facial expression so in terms of adaptability also if you have other movements and all these things kind of regulation also can become kind of you know uh, probably requirement of other body parts will help people to regulate lot of these emotions so unlike basic emotions self conscious emotions are less urgent so these are basic emotions are much more urgent and much more survival related uh, self conscious emotions are much more more social kind of emotions less urgent so can be easily controlled through body movements and postures so that is why uh, probably just facial expression is not the only aspect important aspect in terms of expression so it requires a combination of lot of things so you can see uh, especially how shame and pride is expressed in this particular picture so if you see not just face face may not really say you whether you are experiencing pride or not but the hand movement and the chest positioning and so all these things can uh, indicate whether you are experiencing pride or not you know uh, shame also has head movement people look down and so on if you see uh, face just face you, you may not be able to understand but head movement looking down and all this can uh, collectively indicate that person is experiencing shame or pride or something like that so the expressions are much more complex than just basic emotions most of the basic emotion can be just identified from the facial expression but if you see here uh, you may not be able to understand whether somebody is experiencing pride or shame just based on the facial expression you need to look at their body movements head movements and so on the fifth important characteristics of self conscious emotions are that you know they are cognitively complex i think this is also very evident uh, cognitively complex means what goes through in your mind so it may have lot of complexities at the mental level when we experience self conscious emotions uh, basic emotions may not require all the complex uh, complexities of uh, cognitive level co complexities at the cognitive level so basic emotions such as fear only requires individual to interpret a situation as dangerous or not if we perceive something as dangerous fear will be there you may not require all kinds of complexities but to experience like shame uh, you may have to uh, have a concept of self what is your image how others are reacting what how do you look at other people how do you look at the situation so many things you need to calculate and cognitively you interpret and then you experience shame so it is not just so there is a lot of complex interpretations will be required to experience an emotion like shame so that is the meaning that they are much more comp cognitively complex in terms of what goes on in your mind when you experience this kind of emotions so this ability is allows for complex self evaluative processes that trigger self conscious emotion basic emotion can involve this they can also involve sometime but these are not uh, absolutely absolute requirement for lot of these basic emotions um, they can happen mostly with simple simple cognitive processes uh, but uh, in uh, all this uh, self conscious emotion much more complex cognitive processing happens so these are some of the uh, just kind of summarized way of uh, distinguishing between basic emotions and self conscious emotions here i have in the tabular form summarized the differences so basic emotions develops very early in the childhood somewhere in the few months old child can experience a lot of these basic emotions self conscious emotion will develop much later maybe 2 3 years of age basic emotions are primarily they evolve to for individual survival how do you survive individual survival is that the focus of basic emotion self conscious emotion supports group living social life attainment of complex social goals so they are focused on complex social life group living community living and so on most of the basic emotions are very clearly evident in our facial expressions one can say what kind of emotions you are experiencing from the face itself 
in the context of basic emotions. However, just face cannot express self conscious emotions. Uh, self conscious emotion involve complex display of uh, where you know including body posture, head movement, facial expression everything is combined. So, then probably uh, in most of the cases one can identify these self conscious emotions. Basic emotion in the context of basic emotions self awareness, self representation are not mandatory they may be there, but they are not absolute requirement to experience basic emotion like fear or anger. Uh, but so for self conscious emotion this concept of self is at the center of it. So, this is mandatory condition. So, this is another thing and the one, one another important difference is that uh, generally the basic emotions are cognitively simple in the sense most of these basic emotions just simple environmental stimuli and some basic cognitive interpretation can lead to uh, experience of basic emotions. But in, in the context of self conscious emotions generally they are much more cognitively complex as we have discussed just now. So, examples of basic emotion like fear, anger, sadness here it is saying pride, guilt and so on. Another important characteristics or kind of uh, things that is very evident in the literature is that uh, a lot of the self conscious emotions are very less studied in terms of scientific research very less research is available in the context of self conscious emotions. But if you see the basic emotions lot of researches experiments are available uh, in the in, in, in the context of basic emotion. So, much more research is available uh, much more studies are available, but self conscious emotion much less comparatively. So, why some of for some of the reasons we will be discussing why is much less studies were available in, in the for self conscious emotions. So, self conscious emotions are also very essential uh, particularly in the context of social life, but they have not been studied as extensively as basic emotions. Okay. Why? Some of the reasons are one is it is very uh, methodologically challenging to study these emotions because they are much more complex. Basic emotions are much more easier to study and design a study is much more easier because they can be very easily kind of uh, measured also from facial expression and so on, uh, but it is methodologically much more challenging to uh, study self conscious emotions uh, because it is much more harder to elicit laboratory setting uh, than basic emotions. In the laboratory settings basic emotions one can elicit very easily, uh, but uh, it is much more difficult to elicit uh, complex uh, self conscious emotions in the laboratory setting. Traditional experimental procedures such as showing photographs or film clips are less effective in eliciting self conscious emotions. So, it is not so easy to um, lead people or participant to experience these emotions. So, that is another uh, this is a, a big challenge in terms of studying self conscious emotions. It is challenging to imagine an ethica, ethical manipulation. So, uh, ethically it is also not possible to manipulate and create lot of these emotions in the laboratory setting like shame and guilt it will be very difficult uh, you know. So, and uh, it may not be ethically also feasible in so many contexts. So, despite all these challenges people have tried to study it, uh, and uh, using whatever you know insights available from the methodology of basic uh, emotions. Uh, people have tried to utilize some of these paradigms and try to study the, uh, using the best possibilities. Um, so, some studies are available no doubt about it, but it is much more difficult and challenging to study these emotions. So, that is why less studies are available. So, self evaluative emotions. So, self conscious emotion is the broadest category under this there are other sub categories one category is self evaluate we, we will be looking at these aspects. So, with the development of the concept of self two cognitive achievement, two basic categories of cognitive abilities develop with the development of concept of self, I am a separate individual with certain characteristics and so on. Once this develops people can do one two important things cognitively, one is self evaluation, they can evaluate themselves whether I am good, bad or am I doing right or wrong, they can evaluate themselves. So, that is called self evaluation and so many emotions we can experience because of this evaluation 
when I evaluate myself, am I doing right or wrong and accordingly we can experience lot of emotions. And we can also do another important thing is that we can do social comparison, we can compare ourselves with the other people. So, how am I doing? Not just I am evaluating myself, I can also evaluate am I doing better than another person. So, this is called social comparison. So, with the concept development of self concept, we can do self evaluation as well as we can do social comparison. Accordingly, in both the contexts, we can experience diverse emotions associated with self evaluation as well as social comparison. So, self evaluative emotion that we are talking about is based is these are these are dependent on how you evaluate yourself. So, this self evaluation involves internalizing standards and norms and judging oneself and behaviors as good or bad. So, your own evaluation about yourself with whatever standard internal standard you have to judge what is right and wrong, good or bad and so on. Social comparison is about evaluating yourself in comparison to someone else, how you are doing as compared to the person other person. So, that, that is called social comparative evaluation. In both the cases, we can experience emotions while evaluating ourselves as well as social comparison. So, the next lecture will be focusing more on social comparison emotions, emotions that are associated with social comparison. In today's lecture, we will be looking at few examples that are related to self evaluation itself. So, I, if, if I just write it in terms of, uh, so just to show it diagrammatically or in a chart. So, self concept develops, with the development of self concept, self conscious emotions comes into the picture. So, for experiencing self conscious emotion concept self concept has to develop. So, this leads to this kind of emotional experience. Now, this self conscious emotion could be of two broad categories. One is called as self evaluation emotion. and another is called as social comparison emotion. So, this uh, self conscious emotions develops as a result of development of self concept emotions and this self conscious emotion can be also broadly of two categories. One is called as self evaluative emotions. So, here basically uh, these emotions evolve based on judging oneself. based on some internal standards. Okay. So, whatever internal standard you have, you judge yourself whether you are doing good or bad whatever it is. Social comparison emotion, it is uh, evaluating oneself. in comparing in comparison to others. So, example of self evaluative emotions are shame.
गिल्ट प्राइड एटसेट्रा एग्जाम्पल ऑफ सोशियल कंपेरिजम इन इमोशन आर एन वि जेलासि so to experience envy or jealousy you need to look at other people's life compare yourself with them otherwise you cannot experience now here you need not compare yourself with others shame and guilt can happen because you have some standard uh, self st certain standard inside yourself that you compare whether i have done right or wrong based on that you experience this self evaluative emotions so this is uh, how the broad so in today's lecture we will be focusing little bit on shame guilt and embarrassment and the next lecture will be focusing more on social comparison emotion and uh, one particular part of that is self evaluative emotion pride will also be included in that uh, you know lecture added will be uh, will be added so this self evaluative emotions are results of one's ability to make evaluative judgment about oneself shame guilt embarrassment are experienced when something about yourself is evaluated negatively all these emotions are one thing is very mostly uh, shame guilt embarrassment are when you evaluate yourself negatively for whatever reasons uh, pride is experienced when you evaluate yourself positively when you think you have achieved something or uh, no so there is some positive evaluation about yourself so we'll be talking mostly about shame guilt and embarrassment in today's lecture so guilt and shame i have kind of collectively discussing i mean kind of very uh, so because a lot of things uh, may be common so feelings of guilt and shame are two distinct self evaluative emotions so these are two emotions both comes under self evaluative emotions because they emerge out of your own evaluation about yourself with their own unique characteristics so guilt so guilt is a self evaluative emotion that arises when an individual believes they have done something wrong so this happens only when you believe that you have done something wrong then guilt arises guilt is the result of experiencing or realizing that that i have done something wrong this wrong could be in terms of violation of moral or ethical standard or fail to meet your own or societal expectations so you may uh, experience that you have done something wrong in terms of i you could not meet somebody's expectations or your own expectations or society's expectations or you have violated some moral standard some moral aspects that were expected from you whatever it is whatever you believe in uh, whatever internal standards of living you have if you have violated some of this thing and you realize that you have done something wrong then the result could be the experience of guilt people who experience guilt believe that they are responsible for their actions so this is another thing that people feel that i am responsible for what i have done that is why guilt will arise otherwise it will not arise and can set things right by changing so they try to also set things uh, right because guilt will propel them to do whatever they have done wrong so kind of uh, they will try to repair their damage that they have done guilt has some action tendencies means whenever we experience guilt some tendencies arises within all of us like desire to make amends jo galat kiya whatever wrong you have done you try to amend that what in whatever possible ways you all people also reaffirm moral beliefs that you know they reaffirm it that i believe in i should make it right and so on people also seek forgiveness for their actions so these are some of the action tendencies that we experience whenever we uh, feel guilt as an emotion guilt can be naturally healthy emotions in most of the circumstances it is fine if you have done something wrong you feel guilty so it will set you in the right path if you don't feel guilty at all probably you will not realize that you are doing something wrong so in that sense it can be healthy emotion uh, as it reflects an individual's capacity for empathy and moral awareness so people have the empathy because empathy means you would, if you have done something wrong to another person so you are able to realize understand that i have done something wrong by looking at that person's perspective so that also helps you to kind of correct the mistakes that you have done or there is sense of moral awareness that is why you are feeling guilt so in that sense it is healthy however when excessive or overwhelming guilt can also create problems in one's well being if you 
people may create it may create anxiety depressions emotional challenges if the guilt is too much so where maybe you know certain support system may be required shame is also another uh, self evaluative emotion uh, this also has a very strong sense of inadequacy and unworthiness this sense of shame develops when we experience that i as a person is inadequate or i am unworthy as a person in a what when when something happens you know you feel you i am unworthy i am un inadequate i lack something so this kind of evaluations are always associated with the experience of shame so shame arises when individual perceive that they have failed to meet their own or societal expectation just like guilt it can happen in the similar situation uh, leading to a negative evaluation of themselves as a person so they kind of themselves as a person evaluate as i am not you know adequate or um, i am not good enough or whatever it is you know so their whole evaluation about themselves as a person is included in the shame okay so shame is associated with this kind of evaluation shame often involves a sense of exposure as if you are exposed certain negative aspects of yourself is exposed in front of other people so then we, we all experience shame as if our shortcomings are visible to others for what sometimes it comes out which can lead to desire to hide so whenever we experience shame action tendencies are like people try to hide vanish from the situation withdraw from the social interaction so withdrawal Uh, people will try to hide they don't want to come out in front of people so this these are the action tendencies associated with the shame shame is also associated with certain bodily expressions you know, where people hang their head drop their arms and sides i think we have already shown one picture where you know generally people look downward and there is a sadness in their face uh, in many culture this display is generally have been found in a lot of these cultures Uh, even people who are blind at birth also show similar kind of expression um, so it could be you know very a lot of cross cultural similarity may be there in the expression of shame shame arises from situation where your self esteem status acceptance public failure defeat social rejection invasion of personal privacy in all this context shame can arise so shame just here you can see how shame one another picture we have already shown so generally people look down and you know this kind of uh, facial expression and body posture is there embarrassment is something we will be looking later so it's very similar uh, you know as so another emotion sometimes confused with shame but their expressions are little bit different we will be looking at later so guilt and shame may arise in uh, many similar situation you know same situation sometimes may lead to shame as well as guilt also Ho or one person in the same situation may experience guilt and another person may feel shame in the same situation uh, so it is possible the situation may be very similar but one may experience guilt another may experience shame uh, it can happen uh, in, in in those kind of situations Uh, so the, the for example you know uh, for example if let's say let's say there are two two close friends very close and they share a lot of secrets so this is kind of expected that both of them whatever secrets this close friends have they will not tell it to other people no? that is the trust of friendship but let's say somebody breaches this trust and one of the friend discloses some of the secret about the other friend to some other individual so unknowingly let's say or whatever it is uh, unintentionally so the person may experience shame in a sense if he or she experience or realizes that it is i as an individual is not a good person i should not have done this i am a terrible person that that realization the person may experience shame and may not be able to show his face to the other friend so shame may be experience the person may also experience guilt if he he or she feels that i should not have done this act this action was not expected of me and you know whatever i lied or whatever it is you know so that may also create guilt that i should not have done this particular action that i have done may create guilt also so what is the kind of difference here so lewis kind of answered this question what is the difference why one case shame why one case guilt 
the difference is that guilt arises when a person perceives their unacceptable behavior as the cause while shame arises when the person perceives their entire self as the cause so this is the difference in the guilt person generally looks at the action that they have done is wrong and that is the cause of guilt in the shame the whole person they the person perceive their whole entire self as the reason or the the cause of this thing so in this particular example when the person says i should not have done this particular action then it will lead to guilt when the, so the action is the cause when the person realizes or that that i am a terrible person i have done something wrong so this whole self is included in it this is not just the action because of this action i am myself is a terrible person worthless person i should not have done this i am not a good person and uh, i deserve all the bad things something like that so it's a kind of evaluation of the self itself that will lead to shame so the cause could be different how where the cause one attributes will determine whether you experience shame or guilt so both the emotion involves self evaluation the focus of evaluation differs in the guilt it is about uh, the behavior whatever behavior directed towards the behavior i feel guilty about my behavior and the shame towards one's whole self i feel ashamed of myself that i have done something so this is the basic difference so here are some of the other differences between shame and guilt the focus of evaluation in the context of shame is on the self self as a whole is the focus so is feeling of fundamentally flawed that you are a flawed person inadequate person unworthy person all these evaluations are associated with the shame in the context of guilt it is specific action or behavior that is the focus of evaluation it is about what you did not necessarily about your inherent sense of worth as a person so the action is the focus of evaluation in the context of guilt in the context of shame it is the whole person so action tendencies in the context of guilt is associated desire to hide or withdraw from the others when we experience shame we want to hide and run away from the others in the context of guilt people generally desire to make amends and correct the wrong doings they will try to correct the wrong doings and try to ask forgiveness from the another person so they are kind of they will not run away in most of the cases but mostly people will kind of go and try to make amends so action tendencies are also different in the context of relationship with other often leads to sense of disconnection from others so whenever we experience shame we want to disconnect from other people whenever we experience guilt people mo- are motivated to seek forgiveness and make rep- reparations potentially fostering reconnection so there is a possibility of more reconnection in the case of guilt but disconnection in the case of shame motivational aspects may the, the tends uh, in the case of guilt it tends to be demotivating and can lead to sense of hopelessness or helplessness it demotivates people hopelessness selflessness all these more <coughs> aspects are associated with it in the context of guilt it can be actually motivating and lead to positive behavior to amend uh, whatever you have done wrong make changes correct their mistakes align with their actions and values so it can be motivating in a positive sense so these are some of the important differences between the shame and guilt what are the functions of shame and guilt why these emotions what are the basic fundamental purpose for which these are expressed the most important function is regulating moral behavior both these emotions are basically arises in the context of moral behavior moral situations right wrong and those kind of evaluation most theories believe that shame and guilt are very important role in regulating moral behavior this emotion often stems from violating social norms receiving social sanctions both formal and informal so whenever somebody violates some social norms uh, receive social sanctions uh, this emotions generally comes out generally uh, this emotions feelings of shame and guilt are also standard technique people use for uh, even childhood socialization also to even child adults whenever people do some inappropriate actions so these emotions the idea is that people induce them to make people realize that they have done something wrong so that they can do what is right 
lot of phenomenological studies also suggest that guilt and shame heightens an individual sense of responsibility. So, these emotions also help you to feel that I am responsible for uh, something wrong. So, I should correct it and those kind of sense of responsibilities are also associated with them. Self evaluative emotions have a general function in the development of sense self control and ability to avoid immoral and self incriminating actions. So, this moral functionalities is at the core of these emotions. They also help us to develop self control, right kind of uh, moral development and so on. So, these two emotions also have a very uh, different action tendencies. Guilt encourages action to make things right, reparative functions, shame discourages behavior that protect oneself from further threat. Shame encourages behavior that protect oneself from further threat. So, shame people generally trying to run away just to protect themselves, their psychological sense of self. In the guilt people uh, try to make reparative functions. So, they try to do something so that you know their guilt is released or at least lessened. Some a lot of these experimental studies also shows the reparative functions of guilt that when ex people experience guilt, they try to do or repair the mistakes they have done. One such uh, experiment was conducted for example, in this experiment uh, which was basically done by uh, Kreider, Springer and uh, colleagues in 2012. The experiment is basically the participants were given some background information which were written in a very tiny font and uh, so nobody read about them. Some information which was not even clearly meaning was not clearly coming out very small font. So, none of them actually kind of read them. So, participants were given some background information which none read most of them did not read. <coughs> in the first task the participants were given a choice between red apple flavored or vomit flavored jelly beans. So, two flavored jelly beans were given and they need to choose one. Needless to say, no one would like to uh, take vomit flavored jelly beans. Everybody chose red apple flavored jelly beans. In the task 2, the experimenter tried to induce guilt where they half of the participants were told what, whoever the, whatever the number of participants, half of them were told that their partner actually who was a conf experimenter's helper would have to taste the rejected candy. So, if you have taken red apple flavored candy, your partner will have to take half of them actually told the vomit flavored one. So, most of them then took red flavored. So, that means their partner was by default was had to taste the vomit flavored jelly beans. So, kind of guilt was induced here that you have because of your choice someone has to else had to suffer. So, some kind of guilt was in, induced here experimentally. In the task 3, so, all these participants were given another task which was about behavioral economics game. Some game was there where you know they need they can give some reward and so on. Participant who believed half of the participant who told that you know your uh, partner had to take the rejected jelly beans flavored who believed that they had uh, given the vomit flavored jelly beans to their partner earlier in the session they gave their partner significantly more money. So, it was a game behavioral economics game was given, given much more money to those partners in that game. So, it just they were trying to repair the mistakes they have done in the first case. So, this is one of the indication that inducing guilt can lead people to involve in the reparative actions. So, this suggests that individual experiencing guilt are motivated to make up for their uh, behavior and repair their relationship. Uh, research also shows that guilt is associated with increased empathy. So, you kind of identify with other people more. Uh, individuals who anticipate guilt are more likely to engage in upstanding behavior, more moral behavior like self constraint, avoidance of self indulgent behavior and so on. Uh, shame is linked with lack of empathy because then the person is too much focused on themselves that is they have. Uh, the, the, because of the negative evaluation of the self and this is expected since individuals same tend to hide and focus on themselves. Uh, this behavior is functional since they are trying to protect themselves from further social threats. Uh, the expression of shame tends to elicit cooperation and non-punitive behavior from interacting partners. So, whenever people experience shame, the other people 
kind of understand this person is realizing shame. So, it elicits some cooperation from other people also is compared to when you do not experience shame. So, it has also social cooperation kind of helping behavior has some implication to it. Uh, so, it, it also uh, tries to reduce social, uh, social threat. Additionally, the display of shame communicates that the shame uh, shamed individual acknowledges that transgression of failure which may result in for forgiveness from other people. So, this has also social benefits in that context. So, in summary both guilt and shame involve negative evaluations of the self, guilt functions to keep individual in line with social norms and prevent them from hurting others. So, it has it is a very important kind of moral function it does. Uh, shame functions to protect individuals from further social threats or loss of self esteem. So, uh, the last one that we will be talking here is embarrassment, uh, very briefly we will be talking about here. So, embarrassment is another emotion which generally people synonymously sometimes use with the shame, but the, it is different from that. So, uh, if you can recall a moment when you have experienced embarrassment, what generally happens when we experience embarrassment? Let us say, so this embarrassment you know is a kind of emotional response that arises when individuals unknowingly breaks a social norm resulting in unexpected social scrutiny and prompting a desire to exhibit submissive behavior in order to satisfy the expectation of others. So, it is a kind of emotion that arises when people unknowingly break some social norms and because of that they become suddenly center of it attention attention unexpected scrutiny by other people so it it gives you a sense of feeling of embarrassment and then people try to exhibit some missing behavior try to correct it in some way okay for example if somebody is attending a formal meeting let's say person x is attending a formal meeting with colleagues and superiors the meeting had a norm uh, that as it, as in progress everyone is expected to maintain a serious professional environment. However, during a moment of absent mindedness your phone rings, phone uh, goes loudly. So, it kind of breaks the social norm, everyone expected to keep their phone silently and it your one was not there. So, it kind of breaks the norms of that group, suddenly it rang, it disrupting the meeting and drawing everyone uh, looked at you. So, scrutiny was there. You quickly apologize and silence your phone. So, you exhibited a submissive behavior. So, in this is typical situation of feeling of one can experience embarrassment, where all these characteristics of definitions are there. So, in the experience of embarrassment, people feel discomfort characterized by negative self exposure leading to sense of agitation, confusion, self attention and potentially humiliation. But unlike shame, which can bring about feeling of worthlessness in the concept of shame people feel they themselves are worthless individual or whole sense of self is evaluated negatively. Embarrassment is typically marred by feeling of some situational thing. It is much more less uh, serious, less intense and people may just feel foolish in a particular situation. So, what are the difference between shame and embarrassment because mostly these two terms are very commonly confused with each other. So, shame typically arises uh, sorry um, uh, arises from a deeper sense of personal inadequacy or un unworthiness. You feel shame means you yourself is judged highly negatively, you judge yourself that I am worthless individual or something inadequate person. So, the evaluation is whole self. Here it arises from mostly socially acquired situation. One situation sometimes in a situation you are kind of caught in a awkward situation for certain reasons. Uh, so it need not be about you evaluate yourself very negatively, it is just a uh, situational thing. Shame is much more intense and profound emotion, it is mostly milder emotion, embarrassment is much more milder. Shame can have more long lasting impact, usually uh, the impact of embarrassment is temporary and situational and once the situation goes, generally we do not experience it beyond that, but shame can last much longer. Shame can lead to social withdrawal, when you experience shame people generally try to hide and run away from the social situations, but in the embarrassment it may not lead to uh, prolonged social withdrawal. Situationally you can feel some 
sense of withdrawal, but it may not lead to prolonged social withdrawal. So, this is the these are the basic difference. Embarrassment is much milder and situation connected. Shame is more stronger and more prolonged and it is more include evaluation of yourself negatively, your whole selves of self. So, what experiences evoke embarrassment? In one of the study conducted by John Sabini and colleagues in 2000, uh, they uh, asked college student, uh, they were presented with various description of different scenarios and they were then asked to indicate whether these scenarios are embarrassing to them or not or have they experienced embarrassment in those situations. So, they basically uh, gave scenarios of three situation as uh, situations of social mistakes they have done somewhere and a situation where they were center of attention and a situation of being in a sticky situation. Now, these two things we have already discussed in the other examples, we will be talking here what is a sticky situation. But Sabini and colleagues in their research they found the participants said they experienced embarrassment in all these three situations. What is a sticky situation for one of the example in the experiment they gave scenario they have given. I had lent my friend a large sum of money which he had not repair, uh, repaid. I suddenly found myself in a tight spot and needed the money back in order to pay my rent. So, I knew I was going to have to ask my friend to repay the loan. So, it is a sticky situation. You have given money to your friend, but uh, he has not repaid, but now you urgently need that money. So, you have to really ask that friend and you are feeling embarrassed to ask that. So, it is a kind of sticky situation. Person is not very comfortable in kind of dealing with that situation. So, this can also lead to sense of embarrassment. Sometimes we can also experience empathic embarrassment. So, you are not in an embarrassing situation, but one of your close friend or people whom you know or other person in the situation of embarrassment and you are empathetically because you kind of in that situation with that person or you identify with that person and you experience also embarrassment because of that person situation, not yourself directly involved or being an embarrassed in sympathy for someone who else is in the embarrassing situation. So, for example, you are at a restaurant with a friend and accidentally spill the drink on the table, even though you are not involved, you feel empathetic embarrassment for him and quickly reassure that this type of things happens with everyone. So, like just identifying with that person situation and his embarrassment kind of become your embarrassment. So, that is empathetic embarrassment. How embarrassment is expressed in terms of facial and bodily exposure uh, expression? Some typical observable behaviors happens. An individual tend to avoid eye contact, conceal their face either by with the hands or cover cover their eyes by turning their head downwards often towards the left side. Generally, this is the kind of description of expression. People try to avoid eye contact, conceal their face by hand or something or cover their eyes by turning their head downwards and so on. Despite feeling embarrassed, also people in the uh, situ in the expression of embarrassment, people sometimes also smile, although their lips may appear tense as if they are trying to hold back the smile. Embarrassment, people also smile because of embarrassment, but it is very strained smile people generally give. The most noticeable sign of embarrassment is that people also feel blush, blush as a kind of thing where the temporarily reddening of the face, face becomes red, neck and upper chest causes by the increased blood flow to these areas. So, blush is a very specific thing related to embarrassment, people experience blush so face become red. So, it is some biological connection to it. So, this is one of the expression where I took it. So, persons may smile also, but it is a very constrained smile and look downwards and left side and so on, they try to hide their face. So, this could be one of the typical expression of embarrassment. Embarrassment is also uniquely physiological associated of blushing, some physiological association of that uh, no, face become uh, red and so on because of the more blood flow. So, this is very unique thing of embarrassment. Now, embarrassment can also differ from the guilt in some sense. So, some basic difference unlike guilt which involves repairing harm done to others where people try to repair the harm that is done to others. Embarrassment involves repairing harm done to one's self presentation or one's self that others perceive. So, in that particular situation your sense of self that is presented they try to repair the harm that is done, but 
in case of guilt you try to harm done to the other individuals not yourself guilt is related to sense of responsibility for a specific wrong action leading to remorse and desire for restitu restitution embarrassment on the other hand is triggered by self consciousness and discomfort in the social situation but does not necessarily involve moral judgment guilt has a very moral aspects to it mostly moral violation leads to guilt embarrassment may not be necessarily associated with moral violation and so on so what are the functions of embarrassment uh, non verbal communication of embarrassment serve one thing is appeasement function you know you try to appease in the situation you re you communicate that it is the my mistake and i want to appease that it's a kind of bodily expression of emotion conveys that that it is my i have done something wrong kind of in that situation and i want to appease that so this function is done by embarrassment it communicates a desire for forgiveness and wish to reintegrate in the group of relationship so it's a communication of desire for forgiveness expressing embarrassment also has pro social effects so are you know a lot of studies show that people attempt to help those who express embarrassment so whenever in a awkward situation you express embarrassment people try to help you they understand that it's not your mistake not an intentional mistake something has happened uh, by people communicate by ac acceptance of the persons despite the public exposure of mistake generally lot of studies also shows that. when faced with someone else embarrassment people often like to share their own similar embarrassing situation so people generally uh, whoever experience uh, express embarrassment it kind of positive evaluation from others comes to comes with that expression people realize that this person is realizing the mistake and people try to help studies have shown that reason behind this pro social reaction could be fact that people prefer individual who show embarrassment after committing a mistake more than those who do not so if somebody after doing some mistake are not showing any sense of embarrassment people may not like those people as compared to when somebody is showing embarrassment people may like them because when they are showing embarrassment means they are realizing accepting the fact that they have done something wrong and people always like those kind of acceptance therefore bodily display of embarrassment and blushing can help repair social relationships after unintentionally violating social norms so with this i stop here and the next class will be continuing with social comparison emotions and one emotion that is left in the self evaluation category that is pride so with this i stop here thank you mm -hmm.